There's no doubt that snowmobile gear from every manufacturer is undergoing constant improvement in the ways it can manage temperature and moisture and wind, things like that. But modern snowmobile clothing lines are also diverging into ever more subcategories, just like the sleds we ride. It can all be a bit confusing and it's tough when you're out there trying to decide what suit or better yet what outerwear system is best for you and the way you ride. So I'm going to try to answer some questions, questions that I often get when out talking with snowmobilers like you out in the wild and hopefully what I have to say here will work for all genders. Let's start at the bottom and the boots we wear because there's a couple of options here too. Now one way of going is with your basic Deer Lake loafer here, available in stylish camo. These are often found in green and go perfectly with your Sudbury dinner jacket. They're warm, they're waterproof, excellent at ice fishing and can even be had with steel toes, but they're not necessarily snowmobile boots. And honestly, if a boot keeps your dogs warm, it really doesn't matter what it looks like. But one issue with a typical winter boot is that they don't offer much ankle support because of the soft shells. What I like is a boot that provides the support with a much stiffer shell that includes both the sole and the upper section of the boot. Boots like this have developed from the old days of snowcross when racers used to wear full on snowboard boots. These modern snowmobile ones do fit much better on the running boards and don't get stuck in the stirrups like the snowboard boots used to do. Typically, a boot like this is going to be difficult to wear on older sit down style machines. Moving on from the footwear department, next I want to talk about the midsection and this is where it can get complicated. So I'm going to start with broad brush strokes and that's the difference between a two piece and a onesie. I've been wearing a onesie for most of my trail riding for a few years now and I really like it. And the onesie also seems to be a little better sealed up in the midsection compared to a loose fitting two piece. They do come with two significant drawbacks though. Number one, you have to do something with the upper section when you don't want it on, say at a restaurant or something like that, but tying it up around your waist like this works just fine. The bigger problem is for those times nature calls, especially online too. Trying to deal with all the material while you expose what you have to expose to do your business is a little bit hard and keeping all that material off the floor to get wet or out of the bowl is a bit of a task. If you are faced with this situation, I suggest going to the biggest stall available to you. For you ladies though, you have onesies with a trail side access panel for just such an occasion. I mean, it seems like such an easy solution for everyone because a drop panel can definitely come in handy. But overall, two-piece suits do offer the ability to remove just the jacket when you need to or mix and match tops and bottoms to suit different occasions. Now, of course, I still wear a two-piece from time to time, especially if I know I'm going to be in and out of a warm place throughout the day. But one thing to remember whenever choosing a two-piece snowmobile suit is that there's some sort of a mechanism, usually like an elastic band around the midsection, that prevents air and snow from being blown up into the small of your back. Gloves or mittens are another key piece of the puzzle. And again, here you have to balance warmth with expectations. For me, I want as much feel on the bars as I can get and quick access to the brake when I need it. So right there, I'm riding with gloves and not mitts, and that means a compromise in warmth. Depending on your situation, like say riding two up on the back of a sled where all you have to do is hold onto those rear handholds, in that case, mitts might be your best option. Up next is the brain bucket, the skid lid, the hard hat, the cab, or the helmet, if you wanna call it that. What we're gonna look at here is the two main styles that you're gonna see with snowmobiling the motocross style and the full faced. I'm not even gonna talk about the ones that make you look like the Great Gazoo, even though in the right situation, they can actually be pretty cool. Modern snowmobile helmets like this mission here do a great job of keeping the visor clean by managing your breath. There's a breath box at the front of the helmet, then it takes the air through the helmet and your breath along with it out vents in the back, preventing the shield from fogging up. This can work very effectively, but depending on the temperature outside or even the style of windshield on your machine, you may have to move to an electric visor to keep it clear. MX helmets like the Titan use their 210 degree goggles with clip-on straps, which I find provides a better field of view compared to the close-faced helmets. Now I do things a little bit differently. I don't wear the seals or the curtains provided in the Titan box. Instead, I wear a light balaclava and a no fog. Now, this system looks absolutely ridiculous until you get the helmet on, but I do find it works for me and it's kept me warm deep into the negative 30s. Now there are electric goggles available which work well, but I also don't like being connected to the sled with a wire. And this leaves me with my last piece of advice. And that's to plan ahead before purchasing expensive riding gear. 
Think about where you ride and how you ride, and also think about your gear as a complete system, all working together to keep you warm and dry all day long.